Welcome to the Grace at Last podcast. Here we hope you find freedom from religion and traditions passed down by man that God never intended for us to struggle with. Let's quit looking around us and begin to look within at God in us and realize all we need is already there. Together, guided by the Holy Spirit, let's learn what God really thinks of us and discover what is pleasing to Him. I think we're going to find out it's a whole lot easier than what we thought. Hi, Corrine here for episode 24 of our Grace at Last podcast. In our last episode, episode 23, we talked about depression and the importance of renewing our minds with God's truth. Depression comes from wrong thinking patterns, and when we correct that, depression goes away. We don't go after depression directly. Depression goes away when we believe truth. If we were going to define depression, it's a feeling of heaviness, unhappiness, or sadness. It can show up in many ways, like sleeping too much or isolating, overeating, undereating, boredom, drinking too much. We can disappear into fantasy through TV and books and different things like social media. And then in the last episode, we talked about how sad it is to think that a counselor or a church group, food, a teacher, a pastor, a pill, or any other thing could ever meet our deepest need. That only comes from the Holy Spirit in us and an understanding of God's complete, total love and acceptance that comes because of what Christ has done for us. And today I want to keep talking about that. I want to continue to talk about how important it is that we take responsibility for our thought life. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and discipline. And that discipline is also translated into a sound mind. And a sound mind is a disciplined mind. A mind that is disciplined, and that means that it's being trained by the Holy Spirit. Discipline is not when we get in trouble from God and he moves in and he disciplines us through punishment or withholding blessings or any other thing like that. No, a better word for discipline is actually training. And it's 24-7. God is always training us. And we're his kids and he wants us to mature and grow and learn to love and to trust him more. And the Holy Spirit teaches us how to do that. The Holy Spirit teaches us how to take our thoughts captive and leads us to obey the message of Christ, which is God's love in us, right? God's love in us, and then we love him back with that love, and we love others with that love. And in the last episode, we talked about 1 John 4.18. 1 John 4.18 says that there's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves punishment. And the one who fears is not perfected in love. 1 John 4.18. Do we hear that? There's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. That means fear casts out perfect love. You can't have both. And if we don't believe that we are perfectly accepted and totally forgiven, we're going to have fear. We're going to have fear, but what are we going to be afraid of? God's punishment? The one who fears is not perfected in love. Why? Because fear involves punishment. So what's our answer? Understanding God's perfect love, not only for us, but for others too. There's no fear because there's no punishment. And there's no punishment because, well, Jesus took it for us. He suffered once and he sat down. And understanding this one truth, well, I think it'll fight depression for us. Depression always begins in the mind. So let's look into that a little bit further. Let's talk about where it comes from. I believe depression comes from anger. We have different stages that we go through. It begins in our mind and then our emotions follow. Interesting thing about emotions is they don't have any logic to them at all. They're not intelligent. Emotions can't tell you if something is happening right now or it happened 20 years ago. Emotions will simply follow our thoughts. Emotions respond according to the thoughts that we are thinking. And if we want depressing emotions to go away, we have to change our thinking. 
The only way to feel depressed is to be thinking depressing thoughts. You know, we can be totally fine one minute and start thinking of a past hurt or rejection and our emotions will immediately kick in and we can instantly feel anger or sadness, rejection, abandonment, betrayal, all kinds of painful emotions. That comes because of the thoughts that we're thinking. We haven't been left alone. I love the fact that God wants us to know that we have the mind of Christ. We have the answer. His name is Jesus, and he's the way, he's the truth, and he is the life, and he is our truth, and these lies that play in our head, well, we've got to kick them out. If we want to enjoy this incredible life that Jesus has given us, we cannot entertain lies in our thinking. Romans 12, 2 says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Romans 12, 2. Our answer is not in a psychiatrist's office, fabricated in a lab or a brewery. It's not in another person. No, Jesus, in believing what he has done for us and to us, that is our answer to depression. We have to think different. We have to believe truth. It starts there. And when we think different, we change. And life changes and we begin to have hope and we believe things really can be different and they can be good. So what kinds of things cause depression? Well, as I mentioned earlier, it's because we want to control a person or a situation and we can't. Basically, we don't get our way. (laughs) You know, often we expect people to conform to being the person that we want them to be. We need them to be to make us happy. Maybe a spouse, maybe a potential spouse. (laughs) child, a friend. We expect things from people that aren't even reasonable because it isn't even who they are. And then when we don't get what we want over time, after anger has seethed, we get depressed and we feel bad and sorry for ourselves. You know, all of us can ask God to show us what is at the root of our depression. Find out what's really going on and we can get to the bottom of it and we can grow from there. Today's topic is about renewing our minds, and let's not forget the importance of renewing a depressed mind to believe truth and reject the lies that bring on depression. How do we do that? How do we get rid of those lies that bring that anxiety and that negativity and woe is me? Well, if the Holy Spirit is in us, he'll teach us. He'll lead us and guide us. He will impart spiritual wisdom and insight to us. He will guide us through peace and show us when we're believing lies. He knows us better than anybody. And he is the one that is going to give us the help that we need. That's why Jesus came to bring in a new covenant by which he would live inside of us. We can trust him in us. You know, there's so many opportunities to grow in our faith. We can learn from other teachers that are speaking the new covenant. We can learn what Christ has really done. And we can be aware and on the alert and be sure that we're not taking in and believing teaching that says that we need to do anything but trust God. If teaching is putting us under the law in the old covenant to try to get us to conform or promises of a better life to keep us coming back for more, well, we need to be careful. There is no more to come back for. Jesus's altar was the final altar and the final sacrifice And yet we have people flooding to altars and church buildings, reaching up to heaven, crying out to God every Sunday, thinking that it's spiritual. You know, altars are from the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, and all of that was a shadow. It was a picture of Christ. That system is over. We're not under that anymore. And yet we're reenacting and recreating that. There are no more altars. There's no more sacrifices. It's all been done. When God sent his son to redeem us and to give us life, he brought in something new and something better. And there are so many opportunities, like I said, to grow and to learn if we really want to. If we've been programmed into old covenant thinking, we can reach out into other areas of truth that is all about the new covenant and what Christ has done. We have technology. We can go to Bible apps and we can listen to the Bible. We can go to Bible Gateway and all kinds of podcasts. 
we can listen to other teachers and hear their perspective. I personally, I like to listen to Mike Adams on the Unsunday show and the Grace Cafe podcast that he does with his wife, Susan, Andrew Farley and the Grace Message, Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski, Walk Talks with Matt McMillan and Brad Robertson, John Lynch. Those are just a few that I've listened to, and each of them are sharing the truths of the new covenant. And as I've listened to them, I've noticed something. I've noticed that it seems to be really just all of it inspired by love. It's not this money-making thing that all of these mega churches are having with all of their coffee bars and cafes selling books and all of these different things that seem to be about making money. That's not behind the new covenant teaching, at least in my experience. And it's so refreshing. I love that. I love to listen to other teachers that are sharing truths with nothing in it for themselves. And I didn't find that in mainstream in the religious, I guess, in the religious circles that I was in. Lots of times money and popularity and career path and narcissism, whether grandma expected them to be a pastor, all kinds of reasons people were standing on that stage other than sharing the new covenant truths, which is what really should be going forth. Lots of other motives filling the pulpits, but it doesn't seem to be like that with those that are sharing the completed work of Christ. Why? Because the message is that it's finished. And I'm personally currently working on a new covenant course, but I just am asking questions, pointing to the Holy Spirit and the scriptures so that they can speak for themselves. I don't want to lead in any way because that would completely defeat the purpose and rob us of walking with the Holy Spirit teaching and directing us. He is the real teacher and the only teacher, right? And I'm hoping to have him available on our last ministry website soon so we can spread this message of God's unconditional love and acceptance, all found in Jesus and what he did in the new covenant. It's so exciting. We need to share it because so many are living beneath the inheritance that's been left for them. He says, ours, we don't need to worry. We can trust God instead. And so as we talk about renewing our depressed mind, I just gave you some resources to help you along your way. If we don't believe that we're completely forgiven and accepted by God, we will fear punishment and we will not experience his perfect love. We don't need to be angry. We can trust God instead. Depression comes from anger and wanting something that we're not getting. All kinds of crazy things can go on in our mind. And again, it begins in our thinking. And when we don't get our way, we see ourselves as victims. And again, we begin to manipulate and do all kinds of crazy things. And this can set us on a path of depression. Why? Because it's unreasonable and it's wrong to try to get others to conform to our expectations. You know, I'm going to be transparent right now. And not because I want to talk about myself but because I really think that God was showing me something. It was just this morning, and I'm hoping it might help somebody else because it was a real eye-opener for me. My husband's been having pain in his back, and I think strengthening it and some exercise will help him. So I want him to be on a plan that I think is best. And if he doesn't, well, I think, well, I can't help you if you're not willing to do that. And I'm not going to get into all the details because it'd probably sound a lot worse than it was. And the whole thing took about 10 minutes, but just being aware of the thoughts that were going on in my mind, I learned a lot. And I found myself judging him, (laughs) found myself planning his recovery. And all kinds of manipulative thoughts came to mind on how I could control him. Just being honest. I can justify all kinds of reasons why he should listen to me. But is that grace? I'm nice if you agree with me, but if you don't, well, you're probably going to feel it at least a little bit. I'm just not into that stuff anymore. And because of that, I am so much happier. That kind of stuff leads to anger because then our manipulation doesn't work and we get angry because we're unable to control them. And when we decide to get angry, we start planning. Walls go up. We want to protect our feelings from being hurt. And so we put walls in place. Manipulation in our mind starts planning how we can get our way. And when we get disappointed, we get depressed. I'm just going to be forward and say it right out. Depression is always rooted in anger, always. I mentioned that we have to believe that we're completely forgiven. 
And when we think God is counting our sins against us, we're counting our sin too, ours and others. And this brings on anger, and that's a pathway to depression. Do you point out when others fall short? Do you have to at least make sure you mention it? (laughs) Do you just love to be right? If this is your character, it's probably because it's how you see God with you. I believe when we get a hold of the kindness of the Lord toward us and his grace and his mercy, that that's how we'll treat others. Not with a stern hand and unrealistic controlling expectations, but more gracious and easier going. We'll let things go like God does for us, not counting our failures and keeping a record when we fall short. How about you? Do you keep a record? Mm -hmm. We all have a choice on how we're going to respond to life's issues. People are going to disappoint us and we're going to disappoint others. The more realistic we are, the healthier and the easier we will adapt. And besides stress, it causes sickness. Life's always changing, and if we get stuck and we can't change and grow too and mature, we dig our heels in and create this resistance to try to get our way and do things we have no power to pull off. Again, we get crazy. We get a little crazy. We start planning in an effort to get our way. And when we don't, again, we get depressed. We get angry. And the path to healing depression is to change the way we think. We need to have new thinking patterns. We need to have thinking patterns that are based on truth, the truth that God has said in Scripture and in His Son. We're blessed. We have been blessed with every spiritual blessing. Jesus has done it all, and we're just the recipients of His goodness. He wants us to live from the inside out. After all, that's what the new covenant is all about. It's Christ in you. He wants to lead us and guide us from His Spirit in us, as he imparts wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. All good things come from him, and we can trust him to see us through. Of course, in this world, we will have tribulation. There's no escaping that. And there are ramifications from sin, ours and others. We can't escape all those consequences, but we can trust the Lord to help us through. I'm not sticking my head in the sand. I get it. Life can be difficult, but God is greater. Satan wants us to live in the lusts of the flesh and by our five senses. He wants us to live opposite of how God wants us to live. As I mentioned, God wants us to live from the inside out, but Satan wants us to live from the outside in, by what we see and hear, by what we can touch and taste and smell. But again, as new covenant inheritors, we have a better way. We get to live from the inside out, and God is in this journey with us, and he is helping us, and he is doing this with us. He has not left us alone. And that's how we can live victoriously. However, it can only come if we know Jesus. You know, the Pharisees knew about God, but they didn't know God personally. They were raised to memorize scripture. They knew all the stories. They probably could belt out all the songs and hymns, but they didn't really know God. Again, they knew about him, but they didn't know him. How well do you know God? I'm going to come back to 1 John 4, 18, that perfect love casts out fear. If you think God requires anything from you in order to be acceptable to him, other than just trusting him, you don't really know him. If you think God created you to serve him and to build his empire, you don't really know God. If you believe that God left us the Bible to give us basic instructions before leaving earth, you don't really know him. If you think God will love you more and be pleased with you the less you sin, you don't really know him. If you think you need to ask to be forgiven for your sin, you don't really know God. If you believe going to church makes you more pleasing to God, you don't really know him. Some Christians think church is a requirement. People go to dead churches just to fill that man-made-up requirement, and they're miserable the whole time that they're there. These are things that we can do thinking we know God, but we don't really know him if we don't know his heart. I remember when I used to gauge spirituality by whether somebody went to church or not. That is such a lie. I think if a person goes to the wrong church, it can be detrimental. If we get the wrong perspective of God, it has serious ramifications. We have to hear truth. We have to renew our minds and believe these truths. 
And I'm not saying that if we do those things that we can't be a child of God, if we ask for forgiveness or we think he wants us to build his kingdom or any of those things. I'm not saying we can't be a child of God. I'm just saying that we don't really know him and the perfect love of God that casts out fear. In John 17, 26, Jesus says, and I have made your name known to them and will make it known to them so that the love with which you love me may be in them and I in them. That is Jesus speaking, saying to the Father that the love that God had given to Jesus and loved Jesus with would be in us. They would be one with us. Colossians 2, 9 and 10, in him, in Christ, all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form. And in him, you have been made complete. And he is the head over all rule and authority. Did you hear that? In him, we are complete. If we have Jesus, we have been made complete. We may think we're incomplete or insufficient, but it's a lie because the truth is Jesus has made us complete. I used to believe that I was broken, but since I've received Christ, he has made me whole. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. And that is me. I used to have a nature like a worm, crawling around in the mud and the muck. But I've been metamorphosized into a butterfly. I've been given wings and I can rise above the issues and the disappointments of life. And I can see things from God's vantage point. Not looking up from the ground like a worm, but like a butterfly, a view from heaven down. I can have an eternal perspective and not a worldly one. Where I just live by my senses, which again is Satan's desire. Walking in the spirit is where it's at. How do we do that? We love God and we love people. It's a short list that God asks. Well, how do we love God? I think we simply believe what he has said is true. How do we believe what he has said is true? We grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus. We walk with him. We talk with him. We listen to him. We enjoy our oneness with him. So let me ask you a question. If I asked you the question, what do you think the goal of life really is? What would you say? How would you define life's purpose? Jesus said in John 17, 3, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Maybe you want to pause this podcast right now and answer that question. What is the goal of life? Do you know God the Father and God the Son? If so, eternal life is yours. Again, Jesus said, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. And sometimes depression, it can take us to a dark place, perhaps even suicidal thoughts, thinking eternal life is going to be so great. We may think eternal life is heaven, But that's not what Jesus said. He said it's knowing him. You know, if somebody asked me the question, what is life all about? I think it's about right now. Whatever is right now, that's God's will. I can thrive and I can enjoy and hope and be content and thankful for all the blessings in my life and enjoy this incredible oneness with Jesus right now. Right now. That's what life's about. It's not about the past. It's not about the sweet by and by. It's our right now. Christianity is for today. And Jesus is our everything. He's our counselor, advocate, redeemer, wisdom, comfort, insight, truth, protection. He's our everything, our prince of peace. We could go on and on, couldn't we? The name of Jesus, the name above every name. And what a privilege and an honor to not only know about him, but to know him. You see, growing up, I didn't know about Jesus or know him at all. He was never discussed in our home. And now, today, I not only know about him, I know him. And I am enjoying him in my right now, in my today. Not regretting my past or worried about my future, but today is a gift and I am enjoying my now. And understanding the end of the old covenant and all the self-effort, And understanding that I am in the new covenant of grace, well, 
It is a huge contributor to enjoying my right now. So what did Jesus mean in John 19.30? Therefore, when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and he gave up his spirit. John 19.30. What is finished? What do you think he meant when he said, It is finished? Well, he meant the fulfillment of the old covenant so that he could bring in the new. And we have to understand that and believe it if we're going to overcome depression. As I said earlier, we all get to decide how we will respond to life's issues. The world's changing, always changing. And the world, well, it's temporary and it's fading away. We've been offered a better life, a life lived with the oneness of Christ and that being more important than anyone or anything. And living with a worldly perspective of our five senses from the outside in, well, we're setting ourselves up for depression and instability. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, Well, we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. 2 Corinthians 4.18 So let's think about these things and allow God's truth to renew our mind as we set our sights on the realities of heaven. And so to summarize today's message, we all have a choice. We that are in Christ can set our mind on the things of this world or on the things of Christ. The choice is ours. What will you choose? What will I choose? God has given us free will. He didn't make robots, but we all have a choice. And I pray that today we would choose life, that we would believe God and believe what he has said about his son and believe it to be true. It's so exciting. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up for me today as we conclude this second part of overcoming depression. And it's going to bring a close to this two-part series. And I invite you to join me on the next episode, episode 25, because we're going to talk about the importance of our identity in Christ and how we see ourselves. We cannot see ourselves through the lens of of all of our shortcomings and failures and think that we're going to thrive. We need to be sure that we are seeing with the eyes of faith and that we're believing God. And until then, may you grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for joining us today for our Grace at Last podcast. We hope you learned a truth that will set you free and keep you living in the it is finished promise Jesus declared at the cross. Go to lastministry.org to learn more about who we are and what we're all about as we share this incredible inheritance God has given us in His Son.